I tried to launch. I tried to completely walk away from one-on-one coaching. Then I said, okay, well, I, I miss coaching. I'm, I'm not coaching mm-hmm. anymore. I'm just focused on the course and the podcast. I start to miss coaching a couple of months later. So I launch a group coaching program. I love my group coaching program, but I'm telling David, like, I like it, but it's still not giving. It's not giving me that one-on-one energy that I like to feel. And They're say, happy. Don't do it. Don't come back. Your time's too valuable. Don't go back. You're people buy hours of your time. <laughs> You're selling your time by the hour. How cheap are you? <sighs> How cheap are you to be selling your time by the hour? And so I'm like, well, I'm not like on discount. I'm not clearance coach. You know what I mean? So anyway, the high ticket coaching program is going well. People are getting great results, but there's something that's missing. So this year I started coaching again. I started taking clients again secretly. Hold on real quick. Let me tell you something that I just noticed based on what you just said. Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Donnie is doing great, making the money, got the clients. When she shows me her calendar, it gives me anxiety. Yeah. Because I see all the colors of like all the bookings. I'm like, oh my God, this is crazy. So she stops coaching and then she falls into somewhat of a depression. Yeah. I do. And then when she starts coaching again, I'm happy. Love life is lit. Love She's life happy. is lit. I'm happy. I'm like, I am back. I have arrived. So uh, I stopped I coaching and literally. Life. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, so <laughs> you did. You, you, you took six months of my time because I just, I'm not coaching anymore. So suddenly I go from like this jam-packed calendar to like all this time. Mm-hmm. And my business outside of me coaching is fully automated. Fully so I'm sitting around and the stripe is still striping. Like, okay, deposits are still depositing, mm-hmm. but I am doing nothing with my time. And I am like, yo, this is not the move. I am becoming like, I, I don't, I am the type of person that I am. I don't need a whole lot of idle time. I don't need to be sitting around staring at the walls and stuff every day. So I sneak back into coaching. I tell my sales team, <laughs> <laughs> because we get called, we get booked, we get booked for coaching all the time. I mean, we get people who book calls to see the only call option is for the course, but they will still book to see if they can get this coaching from me. So I tell my sales team, if you come across the application that's strong, mm-hmm. I open two spaces. Two spaces went that same day. Mm. Like, okay. But what I did was I only opened up two 90 day spaces. Mm. Those spaces went the same day. And then after 90 days of that, they're gone. And I'm like, open two more. (laughs) Do it again. Do it again. Extend your contract. And so I've been back in coaching and and I like it. If I love it if I'm being totally honest because it keeps me sharp. Like people are always wonder like why I have so much information to give. I'm constantly working with entrepreneurs in such an intimate way that I have to stay sharp. I have to learn new things. Working with my clients requires me to read books and mm. to attend masterminds. Like they can't they can't get sharper than me. So I have to stay in the mode of learning. Whereas last year I'm just like in these masterminds and, and learning for nothing. Who are we yeah. applying this to? Who? <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you know what's crazy? First off, I'm I'm a very hypocritical coach because yeah. I was literally coaching. I, I mean, it's not taking one-on-one clients. It's still it's group coaching. So maybe not hypocritical, but you know what the crazy thing is? I just realized too, as you were talking, is I was projecting my anxieties and my discomforts on my sister. Yeah, you are. And it got to the point where for a few months straight, we would close the podcast and David would say, well, we're not, neither one of us are offering coaching programs. And every time I would like shrink a little in my seat, like, it's like it. the double dutch move. Like, I, no, I am coaching. No, am I not? Am I not coaching? We're still not coaching, but I'm getting these calls for coaching. People want to get coached. <laughs> Why am I turning away this money? Like, people want to get coached. And so one day I called David and I was like, yo, just don't say that anymore, please. Like, I don't, because I, I can, I might open up a space or two. I might come back to it. And I don't want people to feel like I'm so, so far removed from being in the field that they're afraid to call when I can really help. So yeah. one of the best things that I've done this year was get back into coaching. People need to hear your voice and they need to be told what to do. The course, my course is still, my course is still selling like I released it in 2020, right? Mm-hmm. The course is still a course and I'm still getting results, you know, from the course. 
But there's something also for someone who's a little bit further on. You're not so much at the beginning phase. It's just something about being connected to a person that just validates what you were already thinking or gives you a different perspective on something that you didn't see yourself or just kind of course corrects you a little bit. That's that's still powerful. You guys, I'm telling you, don't let the shans of the world bully you out of doing the work in your business because even though it's, it's probably tiring, it's still valuable. It's still profitable. It's still impactful. You can still make money. You can still make money doing the work. Yeah. You just have to figure out what parts of the work. So for example, I'm a coach. I used to take the sales calls. I used to do the funnels. I don't do any of that part anymore. Just let me live in the talent. So like if you are, you know, the, a podcast coach like Shans, you shouldn't be trying to market to the client yourself. There's a team for that. And then there should be people who are taking those calls. My calendar at the time that you were seeing it a couple of years ago was I was taking the sales call and doing the coaching call and then another sales call and the coaching call. And I just had no time. And that part's not fun. So I've taken myself kind of out of certain roles and I'm back in here doing the work. There's a bigger, deeper conversation to be had in this scenario. And I think that is not letting other people who seemingly know what they're doing for them Mm -hmm. project on you. So now the dance is, how do you, how do you take advice from mentors or people that you respect in business who are getting results? How do you take that information, but recognize when that information is not for you? Yeah, I think you have to use your intuition sometimes and see what feels good. What? No, 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 no. Because most people's intuition and what feels good is based on past experiences. That's true, too. That's true, too. I mean, so here's... something the Lord told him. No, you just scared. You just scared. (laughs) Well, one thing, and it depends on where you are. So for where we are in business, right, we've been through some things. We're kind of really clear in why we're doing the work that we're doing and what that work looks like. So now this goes back to vision and getting really, really clear about your vision. Because if it doesn't add up, if it's not in alignment with your vision, it's an easy no. So getting really, really clear, where is David Never Sleeps going? Where's David LLC going? Where Where's the Social Proof Podcast going? And then as we're getting opportunities and even as we're getting advice, is this in alignment with what we said we wanted to do? Or is this just another good thing that's dangling? I know at that time that I cut off my coaching program, I actively had clients paying me $120,000 a year. And and you know these clients. And then I walk into these masterminds where people are being taught to create programs for like fifty thousand dollars a year, twenty five thousand dollars a year. I'm like, yo, I got I got people actively paying me one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year, and I'm letting other people tell me, oh no, that's like a job. You don't want to do that. You're doing too much. And I'm starting to say, I am doing too much. You do want me to be available too much. One person paying you one hundred and twenty grand a year. It was absolutely in alignment with my vision because my vision was to work with the higher level CEOs who were performing at a level. They had budgets that we could use to market with. Like, you know, I coach clients who are just getting started very well, but there's a bottleneck and it's usually money. They usually don't have the money to get branding or do marketing or hire copywriters and things like that. But you give me somebody who can afford to pay 120 grand, we've got now a person with a budget and we can try all these new ideas out. It was absolutely in alignment with my vision. Mm. But I started to say, oh, that's too much. I shouldn't be doing that. It, it requires too much of my time. 